Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing cell membrane capacitance and vesicle fusion. Okay, so in the first two videos what we've done is we've had uh, a discussion of what the capacitance across the cell membrane means. And basically uh, we've seen how it's this constant that relates uh, the charge that you move, whoops, you can't see this, uh, the charge that you actually move from uh, the intracellular to the extracellular compartment to the actual electrical potential difference uh, that you get across that membrane. And we've seen that uh, if you have a greater surface area, if the surface area of the uh, cell membrane is larger, and then that's going to mean that for removing a certain amount of charge, the voltage you get for that is going to be lower, basically. And that corresponds to having a higher capacitance, because uh, the voltage that you generate by moving the charge is equal to the amount of charge you move in coulombs divided by the capacitance in uh, farads. So if the capacitance is greater, then the uh, voltage that you'll get for a certain amount of charge being moved will be smaller. Okay, so we've talked about how this change in capacitance then can be used to uh, measure uh, vesicle fusion because if a vesicle is going to fuse with the cell membrane, then that's going to increase the surface area of the cell membrane because all of the membrane of the vesicle is now going to be added to the membrane of the cell and therefore uh, you're going to have a greater total surface area of, cell, of membrane or well, phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so we've discussed that uh, Nea and Fernandes did these experiments uh, then uh, where they took these mast cells, uh, which are cells which exocytose large vesicles containing histamine. And the reason they did it in these mast cells was because the vesicles were so large. So the uh, change in cell membrane surface area is going to be large and the change in capacitance is going to be hopefully uh, detectable. Okay, and what they did see is that every time a vesicle, uh, well actually I'll tell you exactly what they saw. Basically, if we plot capacitance with, against time, so here's a graph, here's time on the x-axis, and here's capacitance on the y-axis, then every time a vesicle fuses, what would we expect to happen? The cell membrane uh, surface area is going to go up and that's going to cause an increase in the capacitance. So what we'd expect to see, maybe, is it starts off at some level, and then we'd see it rise gradually by step inclines, like so. Okay? And these step inclines would be where a vesicle is fusing with the plasma membrane, so it might look something like this sort of a staircase picture. And indeed, this is what they saw. And uh, every, all of the vesicles are roughly the same size. So the amount by which you extend the surface membrane every time a single vesicle fuses is the same. So you'd expect the step up in capacitance to also be the same. And this is indeed what they found. So they found that uh, you saw these little step ups in the capacitance of, across the uh, cell membrane. Okay, and they interpreted this as this is when a vesicle is fusing, this is when a vesicle is fusing, etc, etc. So they interpreted each one of these steps as a single vesicle fusing with the plasma membrane. And the change in the capacitance that they saw was 25 femtofarads. So 25, little f, big F. So this means femto, femtofarads. Okay, now, femto uh, means 10 to the negative 15. Uh, so this is, in fact, 25 times 10 to the negative 15 farads. So, uh, in scale, it goes uh, milli, milli here, means 10 to the negative 3. Micro means 10 to the negative Six and by the way, milli would just be abbreviated little m. Micro uh, would be a bit abbreviated mu. Uh, then what next is it's nano after that. So nano is ten to the negative nine. That's abbreviated as n. Uh, then after that it's pico p pico, which is ten to the negative twelve. And then finally it's femto f, uh, which is ten to the negative fifteen. So this is a tiny increase in capacitance that you see, uh, but it was detectable and they interpreted this, Nea and Fernandez interpreted this as a single vesicle fusing. 
Now, they actually saw something far more interesting than just this, because this is beautiful, yes, yes, it confirms the theory that we were working with, but they actually observed something new, a new phenomenon that we're going to come on to in this playlist. Okay, and basically what they saw is they saw this, but they also saw other things. So let me draw another graph. So this is what you might expect to see. Uh, working on the theory that we have seen so far. They did see this, but also on this graph, they saw other things as well. So they saw time. So this is not quite what they saw. They did see this like this. So let me draw some of this. So they did see these step-ups like this, but also they saw things like this. So they'd see things like this, where it went up and down, and up and down, and up and down. Now, what's happening there? Okay, so this was what they called a flickering fusion. Okay, so this is a flickering fusion. And it's as though, basically, the vesicle was fusing, and then unfusing, and fusing again, and unfusing. So, this is something that we're going to discuss um, much more in upcoming videos. Uh, but this is what's known as kiss and run. So basically, when you have a vesicle docked at the plasma membrane, so let's say this is our vesicle docked at the plasma membrane, okay, what can happen is that it can initially form this little narrow connection with the plasma membrane, which is known as a fusion pore. So it initially fuses a little bit. It forms this so-called fusion pore, which is this little sort of cylinder cylindrical connection between the synaptic vesicle and the plasma membrane here, and that's known as a fusion pore. And what is believed to happen is that either this fusion pore can go on and fully fuse uh, the vesicle with the plasma membrane, or what can happen is you can return to the closed state, so the fusion pore can just close again. So it can go either from having this fusion pore to being in the closed state, or it can go on to full fusion. So what's believed to happen here is that you have this docked vesicle, it opens this little fusion pore here, and that causes the capacitance of the membrane to go up basically. So it goes up fully because now the synaptic vesicle is part of the membrane of the cell, so that causes the capacitance to go up. But then the fusion pore closes off again, okay, and that causes the sudden back drop down to the um, original capacitance. And then it might open up again, okay? So you might form the fusion pore again, and you're basically getting this uh, continual opening and closing of this fusion pore. And this is what's known as the kiss and run, and run phenomenon, okay? Or kiss and run fusion, where instead what's happening is, instead of having full vesicle fusion with the membrane and the release of all the neurotransmitter contents, instead, the vesicle basically makes this little connection with the plasma membrane, so-called kissing here. It releases a bit of its neurotransmitter out through the fusion pore into the synaptic cleft, and then it runs back off again, basically. So that's why it's called the kiss and run fusion. Now, uh, I do want to stress one little thing, that when you form this fusion pore, what's going to happen is that some of the lipid of the synaptic vesicle is going to go into the plasma membrane. So basically, when you go back to this closed state, this end vesicle here will have slightly less lipid than the original vesicle because some of it went into this fusion pore here and that will have gone back to the plasma membrane. Okay, so you do supply some membrane, so you would see a slight increase in capacitance here, so maybe it wouldn't go down completely to what it was originally, but it would be slightly higher, so maybe I'll show that like this, okay, so it would get slightly higher, it wouldn't quite go down to the original, because it has put a tiny bit of membrane in, uh, but it would be um, pretty much down there. Okay, so uh, that's the kiss and run phenomenon that these um, these two people, Nair and Fernandes, discovered when they actually did these experiments where they were uh, using capacitance to assay whether membranes are fused. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll dis continue discussing this.